Restream, do it this time. We did it this time. Last time I did it, only went to one place, not the other place. It was like the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 live. Awesome. Welcome everybody. Happy Tuesday. Today is a special Tuesday. Tell us why it's a special Tuesday, Elon. Say it again. Tell us why it's a special Tuesday, Elon. Today is a special Tuesday because it's my. 13th wedding anniversary ah, special today. That is special. Which is uh, very special. It's lucky 13. It falls on a Tuesday, which is one of my favorite days of the week. And, is that true? Uh, what? Is that true? I love doing these. Oh, oh, I see. Because of these. I thought you meant like Tuesday. They just wake up and you're like, ah, it's Tuesday. No, <laughs> you know. <laughs> actually, thir Thursday, I think, might be my favorite day of the week. Um, just because we always have either like an L3 or an L4 group. I have my coaching session uh, yeah. that day. So it's just like a, a great day. Usually I'll play tennis in the morning. I don't know. Like Thursday just is like a wellness day. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, today is super special. I'm elated. I know 13 for some people is like, oh my God, that's such a long time for other people. Like oh, 13 is like nothing. Um, I don't know. It just feels like um, a lot's happened in 13 years. <laughs> I bet. I yeah. Bet. And so we get to start the new, the new, new chapter in a new state this year, which is uh, very, very exciting. But enough about me. Yeah. How are you guys doing? What's, a... what's happening in your life? I see Natalie here, Alex here, uh, both of whom... Got to spend some amazing quality time with us and uh, at the Intuitive Mind event, which was amazing, amazing. Um, I've, been, I've had a chance to speak to a few of you since the event. And one thing that I find to be so, so fascinating is everyone says it in a slightly different way, but this when I ask them about like how was the event whatever and they always tell me it's like it's the thing that I've been looking for for so long that I didn't even know what it was and now that I'm here it just feels like home and I'm like you know I said I said to uh to someone today because they're like you know I've tried this I've tried that and it's like nothing really like works or it doesn't really feel that great or I've struggled to find this and that. And uh, I was cracking up a little bit because I thought, you know, Guy and I have built, because we've been doing this for 20 years, let's say, and we've been to all of those things that you're talking about and have gone through all of these processes. And basically what we've built, if you think about it, is what we wished we would have had <laughs> as we were going through the process. Totally. <laughs> and so now like when people come in, I was like, I get it. I get it. I, you know, it's like it's what I want to want to do. <laughs> no, wait, I was just I was just on the L one call, and uh, you know nobody gets to skip any step. No, nope. you could you take a step by step, just like everybody else, coming to the same version of you know same or slightly different versions of the same realizations and same issues, same fear and concerns come up, and you know like doing what we do is one of these things that saying that we're all the same stops becoming an idea or concept and you start really realizing like the underpinnings of a human being or like the chat the chassis in a car yeah it's the same chassis in every car right the way sometimes some cars are put together a little bit better sometimes the cars are put a little bit worse different engine types different suspension 
makes the car move a little bit down the road differently, but the car moves down the road pretty much the same way. <laughs> it's, yeah. As you go down the same part of the road, as to see the same stuff while it's driving, you know, and, and you don't, you don't get to skip anything. It's just, it's just part of that realization process. So that's just how it goes. Um, yeah. yeah. With that said, um, so we're going to, uh, we have a few announcements and there's also a little bit of a different way. I think we're going to start running these calls. And so we'll just kind of, give you guys the lay of the land. Um, Elon and I will probably start doing a little bit of shorter dissertations if that's possible for us. <laughs> Let me say, if it's possible for me. Um, <laughs> you, and, you took the words out of my mouth. I was yeah, like, I was like, I think it can make it possible. I don't know if he's going to make it possible. Yeah. And, and I always think I'm going to answer something in 30 seconds and then like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I'm still talking. Um, so, and then... Uh, after a short dissertation, we'd love to just take your questions. Honestly, we want to interact with you guys a lot more. We want to uh, assist you with what, what it is that we can and also give you a, a taste of the type of work that we do. Honestly, uh, certainly we can't drop into long energy sessions here while we do that. But, you know, if you guys have questions as you're listening to anything we have to say, um, you know, in terms of this conversation, feel free to drop questions and we'll we'll do our best to leave some time at the end to answer them. Some of you guys here are, are clients and you're doing the work. So you know, if you want to ask, you can. Um, the other thing we want to let you know is um, basically we're on a, on a, on a we're, we're going to be taking a step back and doing a lot less work um, between now and the end of the year. We'll still do these Tuesday lives. We'll still do all our, our coaching calls and stuff like that. But our like regular day to day operational stuff, we're going to step back from and really take the rest of this year to read books, meditate a lot, come together and, and do our practices and and just kind of get into more of a creative flow over the next six weeks. Um, part of that, though, is we want to let you know that come January 1st, we're going to be increasing prices across the board on all our programs. Um, and so for a lot of you guys who are newer here or just listening to this for the first time, it's probably too premature to even tell you about programs. But if you're interested, um, our, our Mindset Mastery program, which is our L1 program, a lot of people are in there right now just chatting with them. It's an incredible program. And we have priced it ridiculously low um, for just $497 for what you get uh, in that program, which also includes six weeks of live coaching. But the curriculum itself, well, life altering. We have a woman in there right now who's been around personal development for 30, 35 years. And she said it's the most profound program she's ever done. And it's it's just digital. <laughs> That's just, It's mind blowing. So I'm telling you now this, um, be, so you have a, these six weeks to realize that we're going to at least double the price of that program come January 1st. But for our like holiday special is that you can keep getting that program at 497 until January 1st. So if you've been on the fence, if you wanted to even take a look at what it is that we do, that's a really good place to get started. And also includes a uh, free live event ticket to our event, which will be in mid January as well. So you can kind of get the whole lay of the land and, you know, see how it goes from there. So worth, worth letting you know that that's the case. And again, um, for the holidays there. Okay. So you want to open it or, or shall I? Um, I'll start. All right, go for it. So <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about uh, distinction between growing up work and waking up work. Um, and this is a not our distinction. This is uh, borrowed from Ken Wilber. Uh, Ken Wilber is an amazing philosopher, like one of the preeminent philosophers who is still alive today. Uh, wrote uh, Integral Dynamics, Spiral Dynamics, a bunch of other books. Very dense, very difficult to get through, at least from my brain. Um, I listen to his stuff and within like 15 minutes, my brain literally, I just feel like it like turns to mush and I'm like, I just hear sounds. It's like, meh, 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 meh. So I just turn, I can listen to like 15 minutes spurts. Um, but in any event, super smart dude. And one of the things that he created was this distinction between growing up and waking up. So for those that live in Western culture, what we have been adapted to is growing up work. Growing up work is uh, the understanding, the mindset, um, everything that you see around like neuro-linguistic programming, the whole art of reframing, the whole understanding of how the brain works and why mom did this and dad didn't do that and why this pattern's here. That's all part of this umbrella of growing up work. It's this- Therapy. 
incessant necessity for our human mind to get information to make sense of who I am, who they are, what this is, what this whole thing is, etc. Right. So that's the growing up word. In Eastern culture, they kind of went a different direction and they went more the waking up work. So if you follow any Eastern philosophy, which is more like the Buddhist, Zen traditions, things like that, you'll know that their traditions are much more based in beingness, right? It's like going inward, meditating, sitting in silence, allowing for receiving. It's a lot less like heady and understanding and a lot more felt sense through the body. Less answers, less understanding, more just, can I experience the world through this? And what I love Ken Wilber talks about is, it's not this is good and this is bad, or this is better and this is worse. He's saying they're both absolutely imperative for a human to be, you know, like, excelling and, uh, and growing in life. But what's been missing is the integration of the two integral, like, like the integration of these two, the growing up and the waking up work together. So Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy have come together. And so what guy and I, I don't know, I think one of our superpowers is we take what I think are seemingly complex pieces of information, data, practices, and we've been blessed with the ability to internalize them and kind of break them down into the most practical, simple, easy way to do things. And because we've delved in the world of growing up work for a decade and a half, and then the, the waking up work for the last, you know, six, seven years or so, um, that hodgepodge of experiences has created some sort of homologation that has brought both together. And this is kind of where I think a lot of people's frustrations, we talked about this at the live event this weekend, a lot of people's frustrations, and just map this on yourself and see if this is true for you, come from this place of most people here do a lot of growing up work right? We read a ton of books, we watch a ton of videos, we, we go to seminars and all this kind of stuff. And you get after, in the beginning, it's amazing. Like when you start growing up work in the beginning, it's like, oh my God, why didn't anyone tell me that I have this voice in my head? And why didn't anyone tell me that because mom didn't do this when I was three, all of a sudden, like my entire life pattern, I can see, like, it's amazing. After a while though, and this could be three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, whatever it takes you, you kind of come up against the edge of what growing up work can provide you. Because you realize that it doesn't matter how much I understand what happened to me or why I am the way I am or why they are the way they are. It's not actually healing anything inside. And you start to realize that growing up work is like an amazing way to understand things, but it's like a band-aid when it comes to actually healing our traumas or the emotional pain or any of that stuff. Like the mind just has no access to what's happening in here. And at, at least that, that point, at least that, at least that level of mind. Yeah. Yeah. That and, level of mind's more about coping and, and management and creating processes and finding right. like a linear structures, you know, like a step one, step two, step three to kind of try to figure out what's going on and then have a different uh, way of perceiving it in some, in some sense. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I will say this, you know, it, most people tend to get stuck in that world because there's a comfort and safety in that world built in. Meaning that when you understand certain things, you don't actually have to dive into the actual root cause of it. Like you don't have to go into the core of that trauma or the pain and actually feel it through. So it's a lot safer and the mind likes it. It's like this realm where it's like, Ooh, we're, we're progressing. We're making... But you get to this point where you're like, I've done this for so long and I'm still dealing with this. You know, I still feel like 
I'm a nobody. I still feel like I'm alone. I still feel unworthy. I still feel uh, that people constantly abandon me. And all that to say is because we're not actually looking at here. And so the waking up work is where you start to investigate that. And it's not like people that do too much waking up work, but no growing up work, they also have all sorts of discrepancies because they don't actually have the understanding to allow for all of that education to actually uh, pull through. So they sometimes feel very dissociated from what's actually happening in reality. So we've built everything that we have here today with our emotional intelligence mastery, like the Ascension model. We actually built all that stuff in. So level one, for example, which guy was talking about is growing up work, but in a very different intended way. We're not looking to just understand. We're looking to understand how this protects us and keeps us here and stops us from actually allowing ourselves to drop in and be with that which is. Because it's doing it just to protect you. It's not doing anything wrong. It's just when people say, like, I don't feel anything or I feel numb or blah, blah, blah. It's because the protection mechanism that's been developed here is very, very strong. So our level one program actually, like, allows you to create space so that you can begin to do deeper levels of that awakening work and then level two and level three uh, continue that process. Yeah, the mind, the mind just doesn't want to be with what's so. It, it, it wants to live in its fantasy of what it wants, right? Like uh, its expectations and the conditioning that you have about what you deserve and what you don't deserve and, and all these kind of things. And so, you know, much of our, much of our suffering moment by moment comes from it is how it is right now and it's not where or how we want it to be. And so the mind is constantly in this like angst, right? About like the circumstances aren't the right, the right way. I don't feel the right way. It's not the right way. They're not the right way. You know, and it's constantly in this debate. Is this right? Is this wrong? Do I agree? Do I disagree? All these kind of things. And so uh, obviously without putting some awareness on that, it's very difficult to drop underneath it because then it's, it's just doing this kind of at the unconscious level and pulling you out. And so a lot of people like Elon said, can go into the energy and get some really big experiences, but it's like, they, you know, your, your conditioning is always tugging is all is always, always tugging at it. And so like having that awareness allows for it. And the other thing I think about marrying, not I think I know about marrying the two works is that anything that you're facing that's uncomfortable or, you know, this, this disgruntled aggravation, greed and things that arise in the system you immediately have like two doorways to approach it from right you can approach it from uh this the, what the mind is doing and also feel deeply into the body at the same time and and to me like that that is the cohesiveness of creating a complete resolution right because if if, if the story doesn't change if you could keep like you might have an energetic release in your body and suddenly feel really good and really clear but if you immediately the next day after doing that, go back into old mental habits, you're going to start enacting into your reality just the way that it always was and, and starting to generate more energy in those old patterns again. And that'll kind of pull you back into some of these old habits and mind states. And so, you know, it's such an important aspect to create this balance. And, you know, I was just on a call and, and it's important to realize that like, so some of the, everything is really mind, right? It's like really just different levels of mind basically, right? And, and we're talking all the way out to God and like what is sometimes yeah. referred to as like the big mind. It's all mind in terms of, cause it's all awareness, it's all consciousness, right? And just different forms of it and different perceptions of it. You know, like this, this physical body is just a function of a perception we were given to see things, but like really all we are behind the skin and bones and, all this energy and stuff is just the awareness that's watching all this unfolding anyway. And so like the, the, the spot of purity, if you want to call it that, or like the place that we want to see everything from is learning like, well, how do I go into my true nature? How do I spend or invest more and more of my time in that awareness, which is watching, which doesn't have all these other contemplations of right and wrong and suffering and stuff like this. And this is how we can, we can liberate ourselves by, by doing really, really simple practices. That's what's incredible about it. And we find that it's very useful for people to have pointers, right? Like you need to 
whether it's the mind or whether it's your energetic or whether it's your awareness, you, you, you want somebody around like Elon and I have slews of teachers that we work with courses that we're in. Um, and for no other reason than those people in, in a way are further down the path. And so just like we hear people going through experiences that we've gone through in the past, these people have done that through energetics and awareness. And so when we come and ask a question, they say, look here, like point your awareness there right now. And suddenly you notice something you have never noticed before. And it's a feeling or an energy or, or a vibration or something like that. And that is enough that that momentary glimpse of looking at that will have your awareness suddenly recognize that. And that begins this almost like a flowering process. Like that's the seed and it flowers into this, this whole um, lineage of wisdom that kind of like naturally occurs in our body. And so really the, the, the repetitions will take most people from a view of the world of that, uh, you know, I don't like what's happening to me. Why is this happening to me? Why are they doing this to me? You know, why, why this, why that, why is the world like this? Um, and that's, that's usually like a first level of mind that most people deal with. We can call that a, a, a victim mindset, but some people who are in that mindset aren't victims. They're just angry. You know, they, they still have that level of mind. Something's happening and they feel like they need to fight against it. Like I was very much a victim of my, of my circumstances. Um, once you kind of see and clear past that, you're going to go into this mindset that is, uh, I can see that things are happening for me. And so your circumstances stop becoming things that are happening to you and instead start moving more into this realm of like an opportunity to grow from, to grow and learn and heal from. And so it's much easier to be with circumstances, even if you don't like them, because everything starts seeming like an opportunity. And that's, again, just a different level of mind. When you start going deeper into the energetics, you can, you can have visceral experiences of starting to see that not only is it happening to you, in fact, it's actually happening through you. Like circumstances are literally, literally arising out of the energetics of your of your system here. And this reality thing that, you know, we've come to call your organic hologram is, is literally just shaping and reshaping itself in connection to this energy output in your body. And it's always going to be a perfect mirror for whatever that output is at every moment in time. And so this is, these are like the levels. And I, like I said, you can't really skip through that, you know, and if you're, you're, if, you know, if you're a victim and you, you're told, Hey, you know, you could, you got to be responsible for this, you know, you're either going to keep going down that road where everything's happening to you, or you're going to learn about true responsibility, not responsibility like, uh, like is stated in, 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 in our society, right? Because responsibility in our society is you're to blame and you're a fault for what's happening. And that's not the type of responsibility we're talking about. We're talking about being at the source of your circumstances. And it's the only place, the only place that you can stand if you want to make a difference in the quality of your life. You can fight against it. You can argue against it. You can show examples. You can prove that it's not right. And you may do a good job of that, right? Because Yelena and I are not telling you that we know the truth of everything. We just know that there's certain places to stand that empower people. There's certain places to stand that really hurt people and themselves by standing in that place. And those pathways are very obvious when you play in them for a period of time separately and you realize, oh, this is causing that. When I do this, this causes that, right? So it's like the perspective from which you view yourself, your energy, life unfolding, like all this stuff truly, truly matters in, in the quality of life that you get to live and the type of relationships that you get to have. Uh, there's there's a, a piece that was coming through as you were talking, which is <clears throat> growing up work gives you strategies uh, to manage certain things. So for example, let's just play this into relationships, right? So if you're struggling in a relationship, growing up work is going to give you tools to have a conversation in a specific way with this being. Maybe they don't listen to you, or maybe uh, every time you fight, every time you talk, it gets into an argument, right? So you're going to learn new ways to communicate in the growing up model. And then you're going to bounce them off this other person. And you're going to have to have this other person kind of work with you through this shift that you are now creating through the mind, right? Like they need to be an active participant with you in this growing up phase. 
waking up work the beauty and by the way that that's it's great if you can even do that that's already puts you 98 percent ahead of most humans right? right the waking up work though is this whole notion that you don't need two to tango and the deeper you go and you begin to heal these aspects of yourself the people around you seemingly shift and change it's almost like they become different versions of themselves because if you believe that we're all energetically pinging off of each other, right? So if my energy is bound in a certain way, and then I'm needing something from this other person, I'm pinging their system with a need or a want, even if I know it or I don't. That person is receiving that energy, but when they their system receives that energy, it's processing it through its own bound up way, and it might just pull them back and create this feeling of like, I can't do that for them. And it wants to jump the other way. And then that makes you more upset and da, 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 da. So when we can clear these bound up energies and we allow ourselves to just process and do our internal work, the other person is now, now not going to be pinged with that same energy. Hmm. And the thing that growing up work kind of leaves off the table is just that. We say this all the time. It's not about the action or even the words that come out of your mouth. It's about the energy behind it. So think about this. You have a part inside that doesn't feel, doesn't feel loved, right? Like they're not there for me. Okay, let's just say that. They're not there for me. And you learn this new way of communicating how you want this other person to be. But if what's underneath all of that work is still this part of you're not there for me. It doesn't matter what you say and how you say it. What the person is being impacted by is still that same core thing of you're not there for me. Yeah. Now, if someone said to you, to you, you're not there for me. Notice what that does in your system. You're not like, oh my God, you don't feel like I'm there for you. You're like, fuck off. You don't know that I do this, this, right? Like it automatically puts your system in a little bit of a defensive or it might put your system in this confused state of going like, how, how do they think that I'm not there for them? It might make you shut down. It might do whatever it does. So that's what's constantly being pinged and impacted out in the world. And that's why like when people do this stuff and they're like, it worked for a little bit and then it stopped working. It's like, yeah, no duh, because the underlying thing has always and will always be there no matter how much growing up work you do. And it's really important to understand. Like that's why it, this, you know, people put in so much effort with it, time and money investment and it, energetic investment, et cetera. And to not get the results that we want after all of that invested, it's, it's very disheartening. That's frustrating for sure. Yeah. I mean, to Elon's point, it's absolutely right. Like, you know, whether you know this or not, you kind of, intuitively know this you walk around and energy is impacting you everywhere you go and so like when you have when you have those parts in your system right and they're in defense that's energy you're sending out and to your family members that's how we've all programmed each other right like they're in a certain posture they're in a certain construction uh, energetically and also defended and so there's there's a lot of different ways to approach healing ruptures in our relationships and you know if i had you all here i'd have you raise your hand it's like how many of you guys want like really beautiful loving authentic connection relationships right that is really really hard to do just from the mind now we have we have certain communication strategies that we have learned for many many years that help resolve some really big stuff in relationships because when there's an elephant in the room in a relationship like you can tiptoe it around you can tap dance around that elephant but like the elephant's fucking there. And until you deal with that elephant in a way that helps resolve it, like there it is, right? And that has a certain energy to it and a certain weight to it. And like we have seen people make huge shifts in their relationships just by having really simple conversations that put integrity back into the conversation. Because really like ultimately in relationships, that's what happens over time is we're slowly losing our ability to listen to one another as there are like these moments of out of integrity, you know, like how many times have Elon and I worked with people who are like, they haven't talked to their mom or their dad in like 20, 30, 40 years. And like, you ask them why, 
And, you know, listening it from the outside, sometimes it's totally rational and sometimes it's like completely irrational. Sometimes they don't even remember. They just something really bad happened a long time ago. You're like, what? And they're like, honestly, I don't really remember. Yeah. And, but they just like, they don't pick up the phone and there's, it's always the same. It's like, I'm waiting for them. If they would just apologize, this would all be done. And it's like, mm -hmm, that's interesting, right? Because from, from a level of mind that doesn't take responsibility because it experiences a fault and blame, it's never going to be the first one to pick up the phone or go over to the person's house and be like, you know what? That thing I did was really shitty. I'm really sorry I did that. It's been v impacting our relationship negatively because really what you want is you want that connection back. Like I know when I have an argument with my wife and you guys are all done this hopefully i'm not the only one and you're like arguing and arguing and you're trying to figure out who is right and who is wrong and the conversation just goes around and around you've had that conversation a million times before or some variation of it and what you really want what you're really trying to get to is how do we reestablish connection it's really what's underneath it's like i don't feel safe right now i need my partner to reestablish connection with me i'm afraid they're going to leave me or some version of that right or whatever it might be and so there are you know it, it really takes courage to be the first person that says, I'm really sorry I did that. It's been impacting us like this. I'm not committed to that anymore. And you're going to see a change. But like Elon said, what's underneath is all this subtle architecture, this feeling in our body. And so you you're still are going to carry remnants of that until you learn the, the quality of awareness that one needs to have through different practices in meditation and different practices in, in co-regulating with another person that brings safety to those parts. And when safety comes to those parts, you're suddenly going to see your partner or people, your loved ones are just showing up differently. You're suddenly going to see that things that really motivated you, whether it's like substance abuse or eating too much or spending too much time in front of the TV and being lethargic, like you just won't want to do those things. Those are all things that come out of these patterns of these, um, of these defensive parts that we don't want to deal with. But like the, the suffering, you know, the suffering is going to continue for probably many lifetimes if you don't choose to be with them and learn how to be with them in, in, a, in a really healthy way that helps them resolve what it is that they've been pissed off about or worried and scared about. But once they're resolved, like there is nearly zero to very little impact in your life, because even if it arises again, like an experience like that, once you've gone through the depths of it. If something pings your system and creates that experience again, it's like it's like a one instead of being a 10. It's very yeah, muted. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like it arises in the system. You recognize it. And almost like an outbreath, you can just like let it go. And we've all seen children do this, you know, like children do this naturally and, and without any training at all. And they go from being upset to crying to happy and playing and, and just a matter of minutes, that's a sign of a healthy system. If, if a, you know, it, and I say this now time and time again, it's not like when you became adult, your, your system, your body, your energy stopped working that way. It works exactly the same way it worked from the moment you were born till right now. Like granted it, it evolves and it adapts and does all these things, but, but at its core, that's still what a human can do. So why is it that as adults, we want to ask ourselves, why am I no longer fluid with my emotions? Why do I restrict myself? Why do I restrain myself? Why do I defend myself? Why do I get sad? Why do I get angry? Right? Like, and, and, and the why is more of an inquiry to sit with than having to have an, a deep understanding of exactly why you do that. That's interesting, but you know, it's not going to just understanding why you're sad is not going to make you stop being sad. It's not going to help the sadness move. You're just gonna be like, Oh, that, that is why I'm sad. Yeah. Okay. So these are, these are the things that we really want to look at and, and, you know, it's going to be probably triggering for some of you guys like you you want to notice like your relationships are so important we are we are biologically bound to one another literally like being together is so important there's a reason isolating people is the worst thing we can do to them right in prison and, and things of that nature and so you know resolving relationships whether you want to have them or not anymore that's one thing right like like you don't want to talk to your parents that, that you have the right to do that. However, getting to a resolution so that you're not carrying around these defensive things in your system, that is the poison when you don't resolve that stuff. You are poisoning yourself through stress and through energy. And then guess what? That is impacting other relationships that you have because you can't avoid carrying around energy in your body that other people are going to respond to. So whether that, that poison in your body is stopping you from getting a promotion at work, or taking that chance to go start your own business 
or finally being in a relationship where you can actually be yourself. You know, or taking some risk in your life that you would have never taken before. It's still impacting you. That relationship is still impacting you. And so I personally am unwilling to walk around in this lifetime with the wisdom that I have, knowing that, that it's going to impact me and I'm responsible for that impact, not at least giving it a good old fashioned try, the good old college try to, to get that resolved to the best of my ability, whether it's doing internal or external work, you know, whether it's through communication or some form of meditation or both so that I can get stuff, these, these, um, distortions cleaned out of my system and then really go see what is life like when I'm not carrying that around in my system anymore. And you won't know until you're done with it until you're cleared out. Yeah. Uh, there is a question here, which I I'll, I'll share with you in a second, but uh, Alex and Nat were just going back and forth and I really think this is important. So Alex was saying, by the way, I'm getting a bit of a echo from you. Um, Alex was saying that my dad recently apologized to me for not being in my life much. And we had a long catch up call, which never, ever happens. I wonder if this work created that. So here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Like, and I kind of hinted at it before. I can speak as a parent, right? And I've talked to many, many parents and all that stuff. Most parents feel inadequately prepared for taking care of a child. Like, I don't care how many books you've read or any of that. Like when this child is bestowed upon you, you're like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Right. And then it's this ongoing game if you actually care. Right. And then there's some parents who kind of like they just don't do this. But it's this game of learning on the fly and, and trial and error and researching and reading and exploring and sharing with your partner and creating this thing and that thing and it works for a little bit and then it stops working it's like this never ending game right and so imagine this for a second so you're a father or a mother and you just feel like it doesn't matter what you do you're not good enough and this little being grows up and continuously affirms to you that you suck as a parent mm. that you're not there that you're you don't understand them and all this stuff now it's not like this father or mother takes it in and goes oh my god that's such great feedback thank you i'm gonna go work on that it just makes you debilitated because most parents i know it's not for a lack of trying right like they really try to be a good parent and then you keep getting this feedback. And if that core wound is just that, it's like, I can't ever get anything right. And then this child is just reaffirming and reaffirming and reaffirming. Like at some point you just check the fuck out. You're like, I can't, I, I nothing that I do is right. I'm done right now. I'm not saying that that's a right way, a wrong way or whatever. I'm just saying like, can you start to sense that it's not just about a parent leaving. It's not just about a parent this. It's like every human does what their pattern and their protector is programming them to do. And if they're overwhelmed by feeling like they're constant disappointment or they can't ever get it right or blah, 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 like at some point that protector is going to be like, you don't need to be here anymore. This is not working. And then it will just move away. Now, Interestingly enough, what the child who's always like, you don't listen, you're not like what the child is actually saying that they want is I want you, I want connection with you. But we, we have the most manipulative, weird tactics when we're trying to get into connection with somebody that in essence, like pushes them away. It makes absolutely no sense. We do this with friends. We do this with boyfriends and girlfriends, spouses, kids, etc. So I know Alex, for example, has been doing a ton of work and Alex like one of the big shifts for you and this is what I want to highlight for you like one of the big shifts for you I know recently is that you've realized that support is not a person it's not someone out there that needs to give this to you because that was the the paradigm it's like you 
And if that person doesn't feel like they can support you in that way, they're going to run. And now when you turn that inside, you're like, I don't need them. I can find the support within me. Now, all this energetic pressure and like pushing onto someone be like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Like all of a sudden that disappears. So now your father energetically, wherever he is in the world, all of a sudden gets this ping like, whoa, something's different. The expectation of having to be there. And again, I'm totally extrapolating. I mean, Alex and I have not had this conversation. I'm just giving you guys like some sort of map that could happen. All of a sudden it's like, wow, I don't feel inadequate because I don't feel like I can't show up for her in a way because Alex can now show up for herself in that way. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden out comes dad because that pressure and all of that stuff is just gone. So yeah, Alex, like it absolutely is because it's all interconnected, right? Like you can't, and this is what I was saying in the beginning, growing up work is like, Alex would need to go to her dad and be like, listen, I had these expectations. I'm sorry I put these expectations on you. And because of that, I'm going to take responsibility. And I want you to know that I didn't mean this, this, and this. And right, like it would open a conversation. She didn't have any of that. She didn't go to him. She didn't have a, but she was doing her waking up, like her own deep internal work. And all of a sudden, dad's like, I'm going to call my daughter. Hmm. Profound. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the thing you got to realize, like space and time, right? This continuum is a, is a function of language. Like we made it up trying to observe something, right? And, and our experience from the way our mind views things, but it doesn't exist. Like we know today that like a photon at this end of the universe and the end of the, that end of the universe in real time are synced up and doing the same things, right? Like the, like two twins, like when one passes and the other one immediately knows that they, they're gone. Like this is, this is not science fiction stuff. So it's like they're, they're, photons are like the underlying, you can call it like the, uh, the thing that creates reality. It's like the structures that create reality. And these are highly aware, intelligent, like far beyond what we can comprehend today are interacting with our awareness and our intention. So much so that they literally, they start interacting with before there's a conscious idea that you have to interact, like to, to do something in the world. They're already shaping and reshaping. So it's like when, you know, you could say that energy is like a configuration, like a crystal is a configuration or a square is a configuration, right? There's different ways that molecules and things like this and, and all sorts of things like periodic table of elements, right? So it's like you're carrying a certain configuration. Everything, everything, everything in your reality is interacting with that vibrational frequency configuration. When you shift it, it all shifts no matter how far away it is from you you know, like they, they know at some level, even if it's completely unconscious to them, there's a change that's happening. You know, I I'll share with you guys an experience. Like I, I have had a really stifle. I mean, like my father and I are very close, but it's always been a, a very difficult relationship for the two of us. Like it's, a, there's always been a lot of um, like tension and uh, we had it, like I was in Florida a few months back and, and we were having we were having this really like unpleasant experience, right? Like that's, that's putting it mildly right now. And like being in front of my father, <laughs> even at 38 years old, brings back every feeling I had when I was a teenage boy in the house. Like maybe you guys can relate to this, right? Like uh, if you ever got like made fun of in the front of a classroom and you have to go read something, even if it's in business, like, you know, your body kind of goes into the same construction, right? You get the, the, the heart palpitations and you turn red, like there's a reason that the number one fear is public speaking. Like most of us did not have a great experience like public speaking right growing up. And so we, we, we reenact these things. And so we were, my dad and I were doing this reenactment. And then this little thing in the back of my head was like, Oh no, awareness. Right. Like while my dad's doing his, his thing. And I like dropped into my body and I found my feet, which I'm like usually never grounded when this stuff is happening. My dad, I'm always up here and like fucking frenetic and going crazy. And I, I went and I sat down, which was not what I would normally do. He did too. We started having this conversation. And in the middle of this, it was like the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever had this experience where they're like, they're in a reality. And then that reality literally pops. And so my, my dad was like hell bent on this process. And suddenly this reality pops because I had said something from this other energy that I'm never in when we're going through this dance and he stops dead in his tracks. 
like the whole conversation just stops. He kind of, it wasn't even about perspective, but like something just clicked for him. I can't really say exactly what. And it was like a completely different thing. Like he was just a completely different person instantaneously. And it went from this extreme tension, like this anger that was arising here to like all of us going out to get lunch as a family in this incredible loving space within, I think about 30 minutes of that response, right? Again, just like two kids with the energy fluidly moving through the system and then boom, like what's there is just like love and joy and happiness. It was, it was a surreal experience. My, my mom literally turned to me. She's like, what the, what the fuck was that? Like she, it, it's beyond our understanding of like what we're used to seeing. Right. It's the best way I can describe it is like, le- like a reality popped and a new reality spontaneously arose. And in that reality, we got to be completely different people than we normally are in those circumstances. That, that was unthinkable. And even communication can't resolve that in a moment of that high level of tension, because there's not much you can do when there's tension, right? Like when there's that much angst between two people, at that point in time, being like, all right, let's calm the things down. Like you need to go your separate ways. You need to downregulate your nervous systems before you can interact with that thing in a healthy way. And we all know that, right? Like when you're still upset about something and you're like, I got to go talk to them about it. It just creates more of that thing. Like you, you got you, if you don't know how to downregulate your nervous system and calm and soothe yourself, like in, in a true authentic way, like nothing really changes. And so that's what happened for me. Like I found this calm in the middle of the storm in my awareness, even though my parts, my mental architecture was still freaking the fuck out about what was happening. And it was so uncomfortable, but there was awareness. And that little bit, that fractional of awareness is enough. That's like, it's like you've built wisdom up over time. And that wisdom has a major impact on what is going to happen next. Even if it's just a fractional little bit more than you had before. And, And that's what this work is really about. It's not about just having an understanding, although that's useful about architecture and psychology and philosophy and shifting and, and, and these things. And and we really think that that stuff is crucially important. It's, it's a foundational part of going down a growth process. And then there's this whole other world. Now that's the thing. Most people are not enmeshing these two worlds together. They are not enmeshing these two arts together. And so they are, they're literally playing with one hand tied behind their back. Like what, what else could you get done? if you had both, right? Truly. Um, is there any, any other questions we wanted to? Uh, there was a question. Natalie asked a question here earlier. Purpose, Let me see. Right? Say it again. About purpose. Uh, no, she was saying, well, sitting in quiet meditation and simply asking God the way to open myself to receiving, I've been focusing on releasing upset that I've never sat in silence and just listened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it, it was about purpose. Yeah. 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 You want to take that? Uh, I I was just going to simply say, yeah. I mean, again, like anytime you're trying to effort to remove something, to shift something, to change something, it could be a simple, like you, you feel a, a pain in your heart and you meditate or sit in with the intention of, making this sensation go away, there's an efforting that happens. And that efforting actually creates the resistance that stops it from actually moving. I I ask this all the time at our events, like they ever notice that the thing that you want most ends up always kind of being out like arm's length reach from you. Like you're always like reaching and it always keeps moving. Um, It's the same exact thing. So sometimes it's not about just that it's, we call it agendaless awareness. It's really just being able to be aware for the sake of being aware, just be aware and watch what awareness wants to show you at this very moment and this very moment and this very moment and this very moment and nothing beyond that. And if you can get into those states, it, it's pretty magical. What, what begins to unfold? Yeah. I think, I think there's truth to what he's saying. She's also has a, a follow up here. She says, um, what about relationships where love is completely gone? A mother is meant to be close, a close bond. Can that be got back? 
you know, it's circumstance by circumstance there, right? Like sometimes the healthy route is like, you know, some people are, are ill. They're so deep in, into that place. They're going to be entrenched in that reality. And there's really only so much you can do. And the healthier option is, is, is to disconnect from those people. But that doesn't mean that you can't do your inner work and resolve the parts that have come up around that. Because there's one thing to go tell a person to go fuck themselves, get out of my life, you're horrible. That doesn't resolve anything. When you can authentically disconnect from somebody after you've grounded yourself, you've done inner work, those parts have been cleaned up, you know, you've reorganized your system. And, and like from that place, you go have a conversation, conversations, you don't see really a shift. And you're like, you know what, that's just not a healthy relationship in my life anymore. And maybe I want to come back to that later. But in this moment right now, like I choose not to be in connection with that person because you might be like, I'm just certainly, I'm just not strong enough to be around that energy. Like I don't, I don't have the fortitude for that yet, right? Like fortifying the body, just like you do with food and stuff like that is important. Otherwise, if something gets in like a, a virus or bacteria and like your immune system is not fortified, right? There's an impact. Our energetic body is the same. Like we have like a porous energy system, but like, you know, you, you can create uh, as you're doing Natalie, right? Like you're seeing huge changes in your life and about choices that you're making and stuff like that. You know, I, I won't say what, but like, you're, you're starting to claim this something far beyond the body, which is also the energy system in the body. And so that you can start being like, there's actually energetic, healthy, energetic boundaries. And when that's breached, it starts becoming really obvious. And you're like, I don't play that game anymore. I choose not to have that energy around me and the people in my life. Now there might be a period of time that like, it's going to start working for you. You know, like I could tell you, I walked away from like, we have our grandparents in Israel and again, like how this stuff comes about, like, you know, I was five years old. We left that country like that left a big bruise on my heart. You know, Elon's too. Like it was a very heartbreaking experience for any five or seven year old to be taken away from their entire family and moved overseas. And so we've lived with certain conditioning that our, our parents have had and stuff like that about relationship to family. And, and again, like this, this like uh, kind of challenging relationship I've had with my grandma over the years. And you'd kind of have to know my grandma to understand like how she gets in there. But like, I got to, I got to a point where I'm like, you know what, every time I get off the phone with this woman, I feel terrible, not her fault, but like my parts literally cannot take it. And so I was like, you know what, like there's all this programming, right. About like loyalty to family and this and then that. And, and like, okay, there's some truth to that if you want to make it true. But like, again, that's also conditioning. Like if somebody's hurting you, abusing you, you know, like if it was anybody you're other honest, than you, take it. yeah, you're going to be like, I'm out, right. Like this or not. Like some people stick around and they do like the Stockholm thing. And there's a reason for that as well. Right. There's something, a need in the system that's not being met. And so I had to like authentically walk away from that relationship for a period of time. Now, those parts were still in my system. I worked on that, fortified my system, so to speak. Uh, maybe like a year later, I had a conversation with her that did not go well. <laughs> that did not go well. But like, I found this again, I found this awareness in my system. And from that place, I said things to my grandma, like and an honest truth that I was told never to say to my grandma the entire time I was alive. Like my mom was like, don't say that it will crush her. Don't say this, it will crush her. Like you know, this and that. And I was like, okay, well, that's the elephant I'm carrying around in my system. And so in this moment, I was just like, here's the truth. And I said that to her and it wasn't easy. This was like, it felt like I was breaking my teeth as I was saying those things. And I think it was a day later, she messaged me back. This leads me to this five minute message. And I was terrified of what was on this message. But it was like the exact opposite of what I thought. She was like, guy, she goes, I love you so much. And she goes, and I can never be angry at anybody for speaking their truth. And, and she started, and it, was, it came from this place of honoring and respecting me. And she ended up telling me things about her life that my grandma would never say those things. She's not a type of person that wants to show you that she's crying or that she's weak. She always has a very brave, happy face, even though underneath there's a lot of pain. She's had a very difficult life, um, including World War II and things like that, right? And so... But she said things to me and it was like, it's going to actually kind of make me, sorry, one second. <laughs> I hope you're getting it just by looking at me. 
It was like legitimately like one of the most beautiful connected moments I've ever had with my grandma. You know, like that, that's what I will remember after she passes is like that one silly conversation. And then since then, getting on the phone with each other is like wonderful. She's just asking me just all these questions that I fucking hated. Nonsense. Now we like, we have like deep, meaningful conversations as she like nears the end of her life. I would have never had that. Like I would have never had that with this woman. And that was like, I, I, I came back to it when I got to come back to it in my, on my own terms. And for a lot of us, that's in relationship. That's in, that's in relationships. That's with our religion. That's with our health. That's with so many things. Like we're always trying And Sometimes you just need a, a pause. You need to get away and you really need to get a different perspective before you can come back and, and authentically do those things. So Again, you know, it, it, everything has its own timing and its own purpose. Every person in your life has a purpose. And and to your question, Nat, like, uh, can anybody really tell you your purpose? I think that's been, I think the purpose is like the health industry. It's like, it's been this propped up thing to make a lot of money to try to help people find their purpose. Your purpose is to be, as far as I'm concerned. You're here, that's the purpose. Like, you're being this, that's the purpose. You're alive, that's the purpose. You make it any more complicated than that, that's just human human conjecture, you know? So, um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. It gives you a little guidance with our, uh, last few minutes here, guys. I just want to let you know again, um, if you enjoy these conversations, if you are looking to do some work, like I have to get reminded again and again, the power of the work that we do here. Again, I'll say we, we have a woman right now in, in our L1 and who just finished the weekend, who's been around this work for 30 to 35 years. Like she knows her fucking work. And she, I just talked to her. She's like, my mind is fucking blown. We don't do your average work around here. This is not motivation. This is not inspiration. It's not to prop you up. So you feel good for a day or two. This is life altering work. If you're willing to cultivate these practices into your life, hands down, guaranteed will transform your life. No questions asked. Okay. We don't do the small print on the bottom, like, oh, well, only for some, no, for all. You do the work, you're going to see massive changes in the quality of your life. And again, for anybody who's in work, tell me I'm wrong. So for the next six weeks, this will be the last time ever, shit you know, this is not a marketing ploy, that you will see our level one mindset mastery. And there's also some emotional training in there program at $497. You will never see that price point again. It will be double and or triple after January 1st. Guarantee you. So that's six weeks training, six unbelievable curriculums. I mean, six unbelievable modules in there. Rock your world. Six weeks of live coaching and includes a live event ticket to the event that's coming up after the new year. And after the new year, you're going to want to be there. <laughs> you're going to want to be there. So the way that you, the way you pop yourself in there, if you're interested, even if you just want more information, you want to see if you're a good fit, we're now doing this. We do this by application. We want to make sure that we're a good fit for you and you're a good fit for us. It's hands down. The application process is simple. It's not a hard one, but again, it helps us manage who's in there. It also brings some integrity on both sides that it's like, you know, you're in the right place when you're there. Okay. If you want to get in, you head over to soulsandseekers.com forward slash apply. It's probably going to take you less than five minutes to fill out the form. It's not very time intensive. And then you can register to have a, a call with uh, Nikki or Corey from our team, and they can hook you up with the lower price point for Mindset Mastery. And that's really our entry point into everything else that if you ever want to do anything else with us at, down the road, and again, if they talk to you and you're like really super advanced and you're really looking for some of the higher end energetic work that we're talking about here, they'll be able to navigate that and set you up with the time to talk to Elon and you guys can talk about, Hey, you're clearly an advanced student. Like let's rock and let's get this thing, you know, pop into to the next level. Um, and for most of you guys, like, honestly, like let us prove it to you. Hands down. Uh, well, you can come with expectations. You could come with disbelief. Like you can be like, this must all be nonsense. Come anyway, check it out. And you decide for yourself after you go through the experience, if it's not for you, we will refund your money back. You should only, we should only be remunerated if you are getting value from this work. End of story. Okay. So that's how I feel about it. 
We love you guys. Thank you for being here, your questions, your comments. And uh, if you're enjoying this work, guys, like share it. Share it. Like you are going to get so much value from sharing work like this with families, friends, colleagues. Like if you know there's somebody out there that needs to be listening to these conversations, that need that you're like, they got to be doing these programs. Like they are really looking for something right now. Tell them, tell them we're here, guys. Like let them know that these guys, this is Tori Prime. We mean, we mean business. We have fun. And, you know, like we, we have mastered a few things here that we have had the privilege of applying to tens of thousands of people's lives and seeing them change. Like it works, the work works. So it's just up to somebody to, you know, invest the time to, to take a look and, and, and apply it. And then I promise you, they'll see the same thing. Okay. We love you very much. We'll see you next time. Guys. Take it easy. Talk to you soon.